Welcome to the section on methods and conditionals. And when I say method, if you've if dealt with other programming languages, um, they might use the word function. So in Ruby, they are m most of the time called methods, but you might hear me say function. Um, but they both mean the same thing. They're just a, a block of code, really, that you put in a function or a method. So I'm going to open up Interactive Ruby. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is how to actually create a uh, method. And we do that with, D, with DEF, which is short for define. So we're defining a method. So I'll just call this my method. And then in Ruby, Interactive Ruby, you want to just click Enter. And you probably noticed now the, the last um, number here is now a 1. And the reason that it's a 1 is because we're now inside of this my method. Okay, so that's why that changed. We're on a different level now. So I want to type in here what I want this actual method to do. And let's just make it easy and let's just have it print something out. We'll say print we'll just say I am a method named my method. And you can see we're still we're still on the methods level, on the level to end this we need to just type in end. And you'll see now we're back to level zero. And if you've used other programming languages in the past, uh, chances are when you define a method or a function, you use curly braces, an opening curly brace and then a closed curly brace. Well, in Ruby, most of the time you're going to use DEF as the opening curly brace and then END as the closing curly brace. Now, we haven't ran the function yet. We've just created it. I'm sorry, the method. And to run it, all we need to do is type it in. So we'll just say my method. And it's going to print out I am a method named my method. And of course, we have nil because there's not, nothing wrong, no, there's no issues. Now, a method can also have what's called parameters or sometimes called arguments. And they're just um, values that you plug in when you're calling the method. So let's define a new method that has parameters. Um, let's just say def. So we're going to define a method called, um, I guess, we'll call it say it. All right. Now, if we want parameters, we need to have some uh, parentheses at the end here. And in here is where we want to put our parameters. Let's just say uh, word. All right, so it's going to take one parameter, and it's called word. So I'm going to press enter. Now you can see we're, we're on level one because we're inside of the method. Now what we want to do here is we want to print out whatever the user types in as the word, as the parameter. So this matches this. All right, so I'll click en uh, enter, and then I'm going to end. So that's all that function is going to do. It's going to, it's going to just speak out whatever we put in. So let's just say, say it. And let's say uh, we want to use quotes. We'll say hello. And you can see it, all it did was shoot out what we put in. Now, the way we're doing this here, um, just creating methods on the fly that don't belong to any class or object or anything like that, it's not really the preferred way. It's not usually what you would do when you're dealing with Ruby. Uh, Ruby is, is heavily object oriented and what you would usually do is create a class, an object class, and then create your methods inside of there and then call your methods through that class or through that object. Um, but the reason I'm not doing that right now is I just wanted to show you what a method is at its core um, without having to worry about defining a class or dealing with objects and properties. Um, we're going to get into that next, but that's why we're doing it this way. So we know what a method is. Uh, we know how to call it. Now, say it is only a method because we said it is. We defined it. 
but Ruby also comes with pre-made methods as well that you can use on pretty much anything because everything is an object, a string, a number, a method, a class, everything is an object um, and you can run methods on objects. So let's just take uh, my name. Now this is known as a string because it's just a string of text and it's enclosed in quotes but it is also an object so we can use one of the core um, I guess core or stock methods that come with Ruby on this object and let's use the reverse uh, method so if you say reverse sorry I don't know how to spell it's gonna give it to us backwards so it's darb the dot is what is telling us that we want to run this method that that's following it um, and again that's a string if we if we just say Brad without quotes reverse it gives us an error because Brad is not a variable only variables can be letters without quotes around them now if you wanted to know all of the initial core methods that are available to us there's actually a method to do that so if we type in um, just we'll say any string and then we want to do dot methods that's going to show us all these methods that we could use on a string so I mean there's size um, match there's all types of stuff here and a lot of these I don't even know what they are um, but you can definitely you can look these up at the uh, official Ruby site if you want to learn more about what these do. Um, so if we put a number in, we could do five dot methods, and we get a slew of of different functions that we can use on on a on an integer or a number. Well, I actually wanted to show you one more thing. Let's do another string dot methods and if I can find it in one second you can see right here and here you see my method and say it these are the two methods that we created so not only does it give you the stock methods that Ruby comes with but it gives you any user created methods as well and if you even want this to be easier to read, this is an array. Okay, these are, it's an array of methods, and arrays have certain methods as well. And they have one called sort, which will actually sort the by alphabetical order or however you want to sort it. So let's just say the number seven dot methods dot sort. So you, you can add, you can pretty much chain methods as well. So you can add one, two, three, however many methods you want you can run and you can see it's now sorted. It starts up here with characters then to the A's, B's, all the way down to the Z. So that's how you can see all the available methods to an object. Now I want to get into some conditionals, some if statements, um, but first we need to clear the screen because it's really messy and there's a system method we can use to to clear this we can say system and then we can pass in uh, a parameter of CLS and excuse me this can clear the screen but I what I want to do is put this into a function and we can and make this even simpler so let's say uh, we want to define a function called we'll just say CS now what we want to put here is what we want to happen when we call this function so we're going to put system um, CLS enter and then we want to do end and you can see now we're back to the zero level so now all we have to do is CS and it clears the entire screen so conditionals pretty much work the same way as they would in any other language. You can compare things um, if something's equal or greater than or not. Um, but as an example, let's just create a variable called name and we'll set that to the string of John. All right, so now we have this 
variable called name with that's equal to John. Now let's make an if statement and we're going to say if name is equal to John then we want to print my name is John. Oh. Yeah, we need quotes there. And then let's end and you can see it prints out my name is John. Now let's say if name is not equal actually you know what yeah let's do that first we'll say if name is not equal to John um, then we want to print my name is not John and then we'll end and you can see it prints out nothing because it is John but we're saying if it's not John then print out my name is not John okay so let's say name equals Jeff alright so now if we do that same now when you're in the command line you can you can uh, tap the up arrow if you want to go back to um, the lines you've already typed so let's do the same thing we'll say um, if name is not John then we want to print my name is not John and then we'll end and you can see now it printed out my name is not John alright so that's a basic if statement now we can also use else we can do an if else statement so um, so right now our name is equal to Jeff alright so let's say if if name is equal to John then we will print I am John and we don't want to do an end here we want to do an else so what we're saying is if when it's not equal to John then let's print I am not John and then we can do end and you can see it printed out I am not John I'm gonna clear this out now we can do comparisons for we can do more than one comparison we can say if something is this and that or if something is this or that and I'll show you that now so actually let's create some variables we'll say we have a car and the make is a Honda and we'll give it a color of red. Now let's write a conditional. We'll say if the make is equal to Honda and which is represented with two ampersands uh, color is equal to red. Alright so closing parentheses so we're saying if the make is Honda and the color is red then we want to print uh, I want this red Honda and then we can end and you can see it prints it out because it is in fact a Honda and it's red so let's change color to blue and let's do the same thing we can just hit the up key to go back to the if statement and we'll say the same thing if it's Honda if it's a Honda and it's red we're gonna print out I want this red Honda and then we'll end and nothing comes out because the color is now blue now we can also use in or comparisons so let's say if uh, make if make is equal to Honda or which is represented with two pipes which is the key right above your enter key or make is equal to let's say Toyota so then we'll just print out I want a Honda or 
Toyota end and it prints it out because the make is Honda but we're not saying if the make is Honda and Toyota which isn't possible anyway we're saying or so that's pretty much the basics of conditionals um, you can use if else of course even with if you use more than one comparison um, but yeah that's basically it so uh, let's wrap this up and jump into the next section